By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Justin Coffey and he is bringing a Raise the Lord deck to the table. That's the name he gave it. It is super interesting. I'm going to show you some deck photos um, in the deck tag section of this video and uh, trust me, it is worth your while. I am playing with a mono white deck myself. I've called it Wrath of God to kind of stay in that theme, taking on a Lord of the Pit brew. Uh, if you like to go straight to the games themselves, no worries, check the description below and there you will find the timestamp. Here we are going to continue with the deck deck and we're first going to look at the deck of Justin. And this is the deck of Justin. And as you can see, it is mono black, but it's more than just mono black. It is also sleeveless. He's playing with it sleeveless as well, which is kind of uh, an homage to how we used to play magic. You know, the cards back then, I mean, they had some value, but little, but not not as extreme as they have now. Uh, it wasn't as, 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 you know, financially influenced yet. Um, it was just a game and we would, I remember buying my first starter deck that was revised, uh, we would keep the cards in that revised box. There were no sleeves at the start, later you had penny sleeves and then you got like all the ultra pro sleeves and all that stuff. Um, but this is how we used to play and it's really cool to see this deck because as you can see there are a lot of cards in here with drawings on them and each, almost every card in this deck has a, has a story. Um, and uh, a nice one here is in the left bottom corner, you see an Urborg and it is a copy, it is a proxy. And Justin told me the story, he said I was playing against this guy and he really apologized because he was playing with one copied card, it was a proxy. And at the end of the game, I said, you know what, I'm gonna give you, Justin said, you know what, I'm gonna give you my um, Urborg uh, to trade it with uh, with your copied Urborg because I just think that your copy is much cooler and hey, so, this card found its place in a deck, in, in Justin's deck. And I can imagine that, that that's just really nice. You know, every time you see the card, it reminds you of that game, it reminds you of that day or tournament. You know, it's quite interesting. It's like you're creating memories and before you know it, you'll have a whole deck full of full of memories. And um, he sent me some, some close-up pictures. So let's look at those here. We've got a, the Lord of the Pits. So there are three in this deck. And the idea is when you have, when you've been damaged by the Lord of the Pit, um, or when you've played against them, um, uh, Justin is actually going to ask you to sign them. So you can see three of these Lord of the Pits and uh, you only sign the ones that have dealt damage to you. So you don't sign the ones that haven't dealt damage to you. So maybe you're going to play a whole game and you haven't been damaged by Lord of the Pit, then you don't sign it. Uh, as you can see, there are all sorts of weird drawings on this. I'm not really going to describe them, you know, just look at them. You can see it for yourself. Uh, here we have some more cards. Uh, we see... Oh, there we see a big lobster. So it's probably deep spawn on that anime dead. So that probably re refers to um, the uh, lobster con tournament that's held in the United States by Dave Firth Bart. And a very interesting looking Nevenerals des disc there in the bottom. Look at that raised dead. That's hilarious. And uh, oh, here we've got a close up of the raised dead actually. Uh, sorry, the Nevenerals des disc. Very interesting. And here we've got a paralyzed. Look at that. I mean, that's been beaten up. And we've got a Lord of the Pit. Oh, this is a actually a demonic tutor, but with Lord of the Pit art on it. So that's pretty interesting. And we see that same Lord of the Pit coming back here on the mind twist. I mean, look at the borders, the filthy borders of that mind twist. This is actually, I think, what a mind twist needs to look like. I mean, mind twist is just this filthy car that like ruins the game for your opponent. I mean, it's extremely strong, obviously, but it's not the most fun card to have. But I guess when you play it in a deck like this, it, it all makes sense. Everything comes together. Um, so these are kind of the cards that I wanted to highlight out. So let's just uh, go back to the actual deck photo here. And um, so we can see the deck here, and if we if we just look at purely at the deck, it's just a a, a mono black uh, aggressive brew. I think what's interesting here are the will o' the wisps because you would expect some kind of an unholy strength or uh, a bad moon, but here you can see the will o' the wisps purely defensively, and I guess for food for the uh, Lord of the Pit later in the game, uh, you see four drudge skeletons. So. The Will of the Wisps and the Drudge Skeletons work together really well with the two Nevenerals discs. So that's kind of like your troll disco theme here, but then in mono black. So you can pop the disc and then these creatures will survive because they can regenerate. 
Then we see order of the ebb and hand because we are playing Atlantic today. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. So Atlantic means you can use fallen empires and there will be mana burn. Now order of the ebb and hand, of course, is going to be extremely strong against my deck because I'm only playing with white cards today. Um, I am playing with Wrath of God. So the, the protection from white doesn't work on Wrath of God because Wrath of God doesn't target. It destroys all the creatures. So that's kind of a way um, that I can work around it and still kill order of the ebb and hand. Um, he's playing, of course, with four Hypnotic Spectres. Uh, yeah, probably, you know, one of the strongest creatures in, in old school in the color black. Um, and it's really a card I'm a little bit afraid of. Like, if he can get that card out early with Dark Ritual, remember, I'm not playing with Swords to Plows here. So that's going to be difficult for me. But um, we also see the three Lord of the Pits. I'm really hoping to see those. I think it's just very, very entertaining. Uh, he's also playing with Animate Deaths. Again, I think that's good. One of the things he can do is... Uh, of course, get his Lord of the Pits back if he has to discard it in some way with his uh, little book, uh, the tome there. Um, but what he can also do is steal a creature out of my graveyard and feed it to the Lord of the Pit, which is just, it's just funny, you know. Um, so I, I would love to see that. And he's also playing with two raised that. So he's got six ways to get creatures back from the graveyard. So wow. So I'm not sure if my Wrath of God tactic is that great against his deck. He's playing with terror cards. That's going to do wonders against my Sarah Angels. Paralyzes. Nah, I'm not really afraid of those. And another card that I find really interesting here is the Paralyze. Um, Paralyze is actually a rare. And this is a revised version. You pay one black. You sacrifice a creature and uh, then you get black man mana in return equal to the casting cost of the creature so for example if you sacrifice a uh, lord of the pit you get seven black mana now what i find interesting here i wonder what he wants to do with those mana because he doesn't have a howl from beyond um he doesn't have a uh, a drain life i think this card is really good with a drain life I could kind of see this work maybe to get a Lord of the Pit out early or maybe to com combine it with a Mind Twist or something, but I don't really see um, an actual way to effectively use it in, in this deck, in my opinion. But if I'm missing something, you know, uh, have another look, let me know in the comments below. So this is the deck of Justin. Uh, let's take a look at my deck, Wrath of God. And this is the deck that I'm playing today, Wrath of God. That's how I've named it, simply because it's built around the four Wrath of Gods that you see there in the left top corner. Now, interesting here is that I found out I only have three revived Wrath of Gods. Uh, luckily, I have one unlimited. Unlimited. I only have one unlimited, so maybe I should get a fourth revised one because I just I, I like it when it's all from the same set. I don't mind reprints, but I like it when it's all from the same set. But that's just, I guess that's an OCD magic thing let me know in the comments below if you have that same problem by the way and then you see the four resurrections on top of that now resurrection of course in wrath of god is this old school traditional combo that you don't see often anymore you cast a wrath of god you all the creatures you know they die you cannot uh, regenerate them they're gone they're in the graveyard and then the next turn you play a resurrection over your sarah angel basically that is what i want to do that is the tactic and you also see there are two safe havens now safe havens of course are very interesting you can pay two and tap it and you can put a creature your creature a creature you control into safe haven and during your upkeep you can sacrifice the safe haven and then your creatures come back so kind of you put your creatures in the haven they're safe they're out of the game then you cast the wrath of god everything gets destroyed and the next turn you sacrifice your safe haven and hey your creature is back right and you can actually put multiple creatures in there now the reason this is not a great card is that you can only sack the safe haven during your upkeep. So if your opponent has any type of land removal and you have actual creatures in the safe haven, he can just destroy your land. And I believe that your creatures are then gone. So, I mean, it is really risky to play with this card. But nonetheless, I think the synergy with Wrath of God is so nice and it's just such a funny card. I decided just to put two in there. Um, I'm also playing with uh, three Righteousness. I thought Righteousness was very flavorful. Now remember, I'm playing against demons and undead creatures, and I'm really choosing the side of the angels, you know, of, you know, God is gonna save me. So I'm having Righteousness here, and that's gonna give my creatures plus seven, plus seven when they are blocking. Um, and that's exactly what I wanted to do, because early game, I just want to stay alive against the aggression from my opponent. So I'm hoping, to cast like a Benelish hero early game, 
a, a, a Mesa Pegasus early game. And then when he attacks, he thinks, oh, it's just a 1-1. I'm going to attack with my 2-2 Hypnotic Spectre. I'm hoping to block with my Pegasus and then play a Righteousness, uh, killing his Spectre. So it's kind of like uh, indirect removal in this case. So that's, that's, that's what I'm hoping to achieve here. I've put in one Veteran Bodyguard. I don't really know why. I just really like the art. I think it's just a squirky card. And hey, man, it's just good to have a veteran bodyguard on your side. That's the way I was thinking. Uh, I'm also playing with two healing staffs. Uh, again, I'm hoping that I can do some combo shenanigans. And I think healing staff doesn't see a lot of play. And I think it's actually better than a lot of people think. But I don't know because I hardly ever play with it. So I've said to myself, you know what? I need to play with healing staff more often. So I've boarded two in. Now, besides the fact that I maybe can save a Sarah Angel here and there with my healing staff, or maybe, you know, um, just get the three life up that will buy me one more turn to possibly kill my opponent. I think it's also going to be very useful with the play set of Bottle of Suleiman that you see in the right bottom corner. Now, Bottom of Suleiman, again, there's nice synergy here, I think, with Wrath of God. I play a Wrath of God, my Bottle stays on the board, and directly after the Wrath of God, I'm going to activate my Bottle of Suleiman because it's only one to activate. And what this card does is you have to flip a coin, you have to call heads or tails. In this game, I believe I'm going to roll a dice, so I'm going to say uh, odd or even, or actually I'm going to let Justin pick probably. I'm going to roll the dice, and if I'm right, I'm going to get a 5-5 five, five Flying Djinn. So, but if I'm wrong, which is 50-50, remember, I'm actually going to get five damage. So maybe the healing soft can kind of soften the blow for me and turn five damage into two damage. And the downside of this card is, in this deck at least, is I cannot get it back with resurrection. So there's no way for me to actually get the bottle back. So that's kind of where I was doubting. But again, it's one of these cards that I think is really cool and it, it just, you know, flip a coin. It's fun, or in this case, roll a dice, I guess, but it's fun. Uh, I also have um, a big book, uh, the, the big tome, uh, because hopefully that can kind of draw me into cards if we end up in a stalemate after Wrath of God, because I can see us both top decking after Wrath of God, and we have nothing on the board, and then I'm hoping to have a big book that can kind of help me to draw twice as many cards as my opponent and then take the game. Um, okay, so this is my deck. Uh, I'm really curious, by the way, to um, to hear from you and to if you can let me know what do you think of this Wrath of God deck. Obviously, it's not the the best build possible, but what cards would you add? What would you take out? And remember, the basis of this deck is that I would like to build a deck around a playset of Wrath of God. So please keep that in your mind. Um, so if you have any idea of, of old school cards that go really well with Wrath of God, I would love that to hear that from you. Okay, without further ado, let's go to the games and um, let's see how this battle is going to end up. Game number one, and I'm sitting on the left upside down, unfortunately, so, and I'm actually playing, uh, Justin is, is sitting on the right, and you can see his webcam is not too good, but I'm sure we can figure out what he's playing. So this is a soul ring, turn one soul ring for Justin. Wow, well done. And I've got my second planes here and playing a disenchant on the soul ring. Ooh, good for me. You don't want him to ramp up too quickly. And there is a Mishra's factory. Is he going to play something out? Maybe a Drudge skeleton? Ooh, dark ritual into hypnotic specter. Possibly at least. And actually it's an order of the Evan hand. So that's a two one bump knight from fallen empires. So it's uh, protection from white, and for one black you can give it first strike, and for two black you can give it plus one plus oh. So this is a very strong card uh, against me, because I'm only playing with white creatures. Well, I am playing with Bottle of Suleiman, so that can give me a 5-5 five, five colorless flying artifact creature. And of course my Wrath of Gods can take care of the Order of the Ebon Hand, so I have a few options here. Um, and there's a second swamp from Justin tapping a swamp and a Mishra's factory. Look at that terror on my um, Pegasus and swinging in with the order of the Evan Hand. So that means I'm going to 18 here. You know, it's fine if he wants to terror my, my Pegasus. There's a bottle of Suleiman. So this artifact, I can pay one and flip. In this case, I'm going to roll a dice and I'm going to say odds are even. And if I'm right, I'm going to get a 5-5 five, five flying token. And look at that, he's animating his Mishra's Factory and attacking with the Order. That means four damage for me. I'm going down to 14 here. 
And this is actually a demonic tutor. It's altered with a Lord of the Pit drawing, but it is a demonic tutor. So I'm on 14. He's tutoring for something. So things are not looking great for me playing a safe haven. And I wonder if I'm going to activate the bottle. I mean, I'm probably going to wait until he attacks and it needs combat. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. And then if I'm right, I'm going to get a 5-5 five, five Jin to block with, which would be great. But if I'm wrong, I'm taking 5 damage and the damage from the attack itself. And I'm already on uh, 14 here. Now he's going to animate his factory attacking here, hitting me for 4 or wants to. In response, I'm going to roll the dice. I'm always choosing even uh, with this deck. So making some space to roll. And oh, that goes off. So doing it again. And it is a 2, so I'm lucky here getting a 5-5. Five, five. And please watch the token. I've got beautiful tokens from Enrico from the Venetian lines in Italy. He gave me these tokens, sent them to me in the mail. And they're just stunning. They're great to play with. So I have now have a 5-5 five, five flyer, and it kills the Order of the Ebon Hand. That means I take 2 more damage from the Mishra's Factory. And I wonder if this is actually going to uh, give me the victory. And we're just discussing the card a little bit here um, and how lucky I am in this situation because, I mean, I have a 50-50 chance, but if it wouldn't have worked out, it would mean 9 damage, 5 damage from the bo uh, bottle, plus 4 damage from the combat. And there is a Hypnotic Spectre on the board. I wonder if I'm going to attack here, and that's exactly what I'm doing, attacking. He's taken the 5 damage and I'm playing a Sarah Angel. So all of a sudden, the game has completely turned. So at the start, it was definitely all Justin, and now it's all me, I guess, with a Sarah Angel and a 5-5 five, five Flying Jinn. First, we have a Terror on the Sarah Angel. That means he can attack, and I'm going to lose a creature here. He's also, oh, four damage for me. Look at that, going to eight and losing a card, losing a Resurrection. So probably attacking with the Jinn wasn't the best decision here. Then again, he was pretty low on cards, so I felt like it was a reasonable choice for me to make. Um, I guess, do I want to attack here? I choose not to. Remember, I could have also used my safe haven if I would have had mana to um, save my angel from the terror, but I was completely tapped out, so that was no option. And there's another Hypnotic Spectre on the board. The problem here is I'm on 8, so if I attack, I'm just going to take a lot of damage, and I don't want to do that. Justin on 15. So it's quite an interesting game here. He just has one card. I believe I'm top decking as well at this moment. Playing another Swamp. And he's passing turn here, it seems. Or is he thinking about attacking? And he's passing turn. Untapping my planes, drawing for turn. And do I have another Sarah Angel? Very lucky for me because that means I can... Do I want to swing in? Am I taking the risk? I guess I'm taking the risk again. Remember, if he has a terror here, I'm in serious uh, trouble. Attacking with the Jin, and he's taking 5 more damage. He's going to 10. Look at that, another Hypnotic Spectre. Wow. Am I actually going to attack here with the Jin and the Sarah Angel? Because I don't have to tap the Sarah, and then he can trade it for 2 Hypnotic Spectres. I could also band it, of course, making a huge band. The problem is I'm on 8. That's something I have to keep in the back of my mind. So I decide not to attack here. I think a band perhaps. Whoa, Lord of the Pit hitting the table. Now this is an actual problem for me. Lord of the Pit. Maybe if I have a Wrath of God. That's what I need here. 7-7 seven, seven, Trample Flying Creature Lord of the Pit. And every turn Justin has to sacrifice a creature to the Lord. Or else he's going to get 7 damage. So, uh, wow. And actually, it's not, op it, it's not an option not to sacrifice a creature. Uh, he has to sacrifice a creature if he has a creature. Um, taking a turn here. Finding another planes. Tapping 4. Is that a resurrection? No, it's a bottle as well. Uh, keeping my fingers crossed, perhaps. I mean... I'm afraid he's going to swing. And now he's going to feed his Mishra's Factory to his Lord of the Pit. He wants to keep his flyers intact, of course. And, I mean, there's a raised dead. Oh, you got to love this. I, I really like these nice, innocent, like, little combos and synergies. You know, playing raised dead with the Lord of the Pit. 
Uh, that really reminds me of how we used to play in the early days. Attacking here with Lord of the Pit. So this is a 7-7. Seven, seven. As his connection is getting worse, by the way. But it's a 7-7 seven, seven Flying Trampler. And I'm going to double block it here. And he's probably going to kill my colorless creature. And we had a little discussion like, is trample damage still going through? But that's not the case. Um, so five damage on the Jinn and two damage on the Angel. That means I'm still on eight and he's lost his Lord of the Pit. So that's good news for me. On the other hand, um, you know... <sighs> He has he has that order of the ebon hand that he can now attack with. Remember, it's got protection from white, so I guess I have to flip again with the bottle. But if I'm wrong, I'm basically killing myself. Like if 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 the dice flip doesn't end up in my favor, attacking here. Look at this, two hypnotic specters. He's kind of forcing my hand here. I have to go and roll the dice. Oh, keep my fingers crossed here. Yes, and again, it's even. That means, again, I'm getting a 5-5 five, five flyer. I am extremely lucky, or I'm playing with loaded dice. Uh, we'll, we'll see as this game continues. Um, there's another 5-5 five, five Jin on the table, and I am, I'm not blocking the Ebon Hand. I think I should block here the Ebon Hand. He's actually playing a Sacrifice. Oh, this is going to be interesting. So sacrifice an interrupt for one black, he can sack. So that means he's getting three mana. He can pump the three mana. Oh, he's pumping the three mana in his order of the ebon hand. So he can give it a plus two plus O. Oh, look at that, playing a dark ritual. He can also give it first strike. He can pump it up. He can make it into a five one first strike creature. Wow, just a nice play. So he's actually killing my gin. Uh, in response, I'm putting my Jin into the safe haven. Wow, wow, wow. Remember, he does have a strip mine. So if he uses the strip mine, I lose my Jin. But maybe he doesn't know. And I guess he doesn't know. He's not doing it. So that's good news for me. I can now sacrifice my safe haven in my upkeep and get my Jin back. Wow, this is really a lifesaver. And what a play, Justin. What a play by you with the sacrifice. Using sacrifice to pump up your ebb and hand together with the dark ritual to make a 5-1 first strike creature. The only thing you forgot in all honesty uh, is to use it against, um, is to use your strip mine against the safe haven. And here I attack with the Sarah Angel and three Benalish heroes. That means Justin's gonna drop to seven and I'm on six. So this is a very close first game. And this is extremely interesting. He's attacking. I, I mean, I have to block. And remember, he can make it. I don't think he has enough mana here. Another Dark Ritual. I really like the way how these, these Dark Rituals work with Order of the Ebon Hand. Now, I don't play a lot of Atlantic, so I'm not really familiar with the strength of, of uh, the Order of the Ebon Hand. But here I can really see how powerful it is. Attacking with the Benalish Heroes and with the Sarah Angel. The problem is I cannot block the order of the Ebon Hand. I'm on six life. He can hit me for four. Remember, it's got protection from white. There is a Will-O-The-Wisp to stop my Sarah Angel. So it's actually quite a, quite a strong card here. But remember, Justin is only on four. So is he going to attack here? He is, and he's gonna pump it to three. And that means I'm gonna drop to three life. I have to attack here. He blocks the Sarah Angel, takes three, goes to one life. Oh, it's not enough. He's on one. Oh, he's going to kill me. And where were my Wrath of Gods in this game? Oh, man. I, so despite the fact that I've had two positive rolls with the Bottle of Suleiman, I've had two 5-5 five, five gins. I couldn't win against Justin here. And I have to really, I have to tip my hat to you, sir. Um... You did forget to stir up my safe haven, but that play with um, that, that 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 play with dark ritual and sacrifice on the order of the Evan Hand, man, that is. Let's take a look back at that play. Actually, that is really a powerful play. Oh man, here we see it again. Oh, beautiful. All I can say is let's go to game two. Um, we're actually not going to sideboard because we don't have any sideboards and it would be pretty boring because we would just board in, you know, protection from black, protection from white, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. So we decided not to do it. Let's go to game number two.
Game number two. So I'm on the play with my back against the wall. Have to win this one to make it 1-1. And advance to a decisive game number three. And that game one was super, super close. And uh, if, it's, if it's going to be as much fun as game one, I'm fine with actually losing it. Because that was like a really great game to play. And uh, it looks like Justin is taking a mulligan. And uh, shuffling his cards again. I, I do see some riffle shuffling going on there. And now uh, let's take a look. And there, one card on the bottom. Now he is on the draw, so he's going to draw card number seven next. And there is a soul ring. So that's a good start for me. So maybe I can cast a turn three Sarah Angel, who knows. But there's also that Will o the Wisp. And I've got four mana at my disposal right now. Tapping four. Will I see a bottle of Suleiman? No, just tapping two here for a Maze of Pegasus. And passing turn here. The 1-1 one, one Flyer with Banding. And there is another Will o the Wisp hitting the table from Justin. So a lot of defense here. Playing five. And there is a bottle of Suleiman. Passing turn. Now remember, I was super lucky in game one. It provided me with two gins. I didn't lose a single um, dice roll. And there is a Dark Ritual and a Nevenerals Disc. So that's interesting because that will destroy my bottle. Am I going to play a Disenchant on this or am I just going to accept it? Now remember, he can regenerate his Will o' the Wisp. So I think if I have a Disenchant, I should probably Disenchant it. I'm playing three main here, playing a Disenchant so the Disc is gone. I think it's a good decision. I'm probably waiting for some more board commitment from Justin here, and then hopefully I can play a well-timed Wrath of God, because remember, Wrath of God doesn't let creatures regenerate, so it takes care of those Will-O-The-Wisps. I'm attacking here, so that probably means I'm going to play a Wrath. Regenerating it here makes sense. Second main, playing a Wrath of God. Destroying everything, and now I'm probably going to um, use my bottle. Or am I going to wait until his end step? And I guess that's what I'm going to do. Passing turn here. There's another Mistress Factory from Justin. So he's probably going to swing in here with one of the factories. Because the other one still has Summoning Sickness. Attacking for two. In response, I'm going to use my bottle. And I'm actually asking Justin to roll. Um, and he had some really interesting <laughs> dice. I remember that. So he actually had to look for a proper one. Remember, I'm even. Even means a 5-5 five, five flyer and odds... And it's like really hard to see, but it's three. So that means I'm taking five damage plus two damage here. Plus he's pumping it probably. So even more damage means I'm taking eight damage here going to 12. So this is huge. And of course, my uh, Wrath of Gods are not really helpful against uh, the factories. So here you can see the downside of your bottle of Salem. And if it doesn't work, especially when playing against an aggressive deck. Oh, Paralyze and another... Factory, it's looking very bad for me here. Remember, I have to actually win this one. How am I going to win this one? He's going to swing in, attack me for five damage here, going dropping to seven. Oh, what am I supposed to do? I guess, I mean, it has Vigilance, so the Paralyze is not really going to do anything now anymore. But on the other hand, if he finds another Paralyze, can he kill me? Almost. Um, I don't understand why I'm not attacking here, by the way. I think that's a bit of a misplay. And he's taking back his will o the wisp playing it out. That means he now has a blocker for my Sarah Angel. And I really don't understand why I didn't do that. And he's I have to block with it because I don't want to die, but he is pumping it up. So that means I lose my Sarah Angel. I'm on 7 life here. And I could have at least dealt 4 damage. But okay, that's water under the bridge. What can I do next? Do I have a resurrection? No, but I do have a double Pegasus to kind of block. And I'm just trying to stall for time here. And ooh, it's hard to see what creature that is. It Oh, it's a Drudge Skeleton. So he's attacking with the 2-2. And 
I guess I'm just going to block for one because he can pump it with the other factor. I'm actually taking the damage. Interesting here, going to four. So deciding to take the damage, dropping from seven to four. And there we go, playing a Sarah Angel. So I'm just trying to create some stability here. And I've got a Sarah and two Pegasuses. If he can draw into an order of the Ebon Hand, I'm toast again. And here you can kind of see the trouble for me playing against Justin. The Mishra's factories, they're really difficult to deal with for me because of the Wrath of God. And there we go, Resurrection. Putting some, some uh, pressure now maybe on Justin. Deciding not to attack because he has that Willow now. But next turn I can just swing in with two Sarah Angels. Hopefully I'm going to do that. Um, and let's see, Justin just passing turn, not playing out any new threats. So maybe there's opportunity for me here. I mean, I am just on four, but at least I now have the upper hand blocking one Sarah with a Willow, taking four damage, going to 16, playing a bottle again. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm only going to use this bottle if I really, really, really have to, because I'm on four life. If I'm going to activate the, the bottle and I'm wrong, you know, the, the dice roll ends up against my favor i take five damage and i die because i'm on four so that bottle is really risky right now attacking here dealing another four damage and playing a banalish hero and as i'm watching this game another um card that i was considering uh to put in here instead of the bottle of suleiman was the the um um the statue oh and i forgot its name it's four mana as well and you can make it into a three six creature so it's an artifact but you can make it into a three six creature and then just kind of use it as a creature works really well with um wrath of god as well but let's take a look at this game justin's on 12 and i'm gonna attack i guess just with the two angels again gonna that's gonna mean that justin's gonna drop to eight and i just have to hope that justin cannot find Oh, and look at this, also attacking with my Pegasus. And he can only block one. That means he's going to take six damage. He's going to drop to six life. Wow, and the tables have turned here. Even if he draws an Ebon Hand now, I think I can kind of take this game. And I think I have it. He's showing me his hand. He's just full of dark rituals. So nothing could help him here. Wow. This was unexpected. I kind of thought that he would really, really take this game um, when, when you look, especially at the start of game number two. But hey, I got this one. It is 1-1, one, one, and that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, and it is 1-1, one, one, and what a thriller. Uh, Justin's on the play. Remember, he also took a mulligan in that uh, second game, and uh, I was, I guess he was unlucky with the dark rituals there i think three in his hand and he couldn't find order of the evan hand on the other hand i mean if you look at how powerful those mistress factories are against my deck uh anyway let's see uh let's see what's gonna happen here game number three justin on the play can i win this with my wrath of god deck or will the uh raise the lord will the lord of the pits of justin be successful here casting a planes passing turn second swamp here from justin and there we see an order of the evan hand and a uh, second planes passing turn. And there's a third swamp attacking here. He can pump it if he wants to. And he's not doing it. That's usually bad news exactly because it means he can cast something. He's going to cast something else. In this case, Hypnotic Spectre. And playing a Mesa Pegasus. And hopefully I have a Righteousness in hand. That would be pretty awesome if I could now block play a Righteousness. And there, okay, there are some Mushrooms on the Swamp. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, let's see what's going to happen here. He can now pump his Ebon Hand for four, actually, but he's not going to do that. Oh, oh, man, that's dirty. Playing a Mind Twist for three. Uh, and, of course, also having that Hypnotic Spectre. Eee. So we're counting here, so he can just say one, two, three, four, five, or six. And he's actually going to roll the dice, so that's a two. So that's healing soft is gone. That is a four. That means the bottle is gone and a six. Oh, it's actually a six. Oh, okay, so that is six. Now I get it. So it keeps... That's a one. Okay, okay, let's see. So I'm losing a planes, a healing staff, and a bottle of Suleiman. 
Oh, man. He's actually not attacking with his hippie. That's interesting. Maybe he thought it was a nice balance to play a twist and at least not attack. So, I don't know. Or maybe he just forgot. L let me know, Justin, when you see this game in the comments below. Uh, attacking now. Um, having, I guess I have to block and... Oh, there's the righteousness. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just really happy when you can use a righteousness. I just... Uh, it is a card where you think, hey, man, it's actually pretty good. You can block and you can give plus seven, plus seven for one white. But... When you play it, it's actually not that useful in a lot of situations. Ouch, another Hypnotic Spectre. And I'm, of course, still had to take the damage from the Order of the Ebon Hand. I need a Wrath of God here. I need a Wrath of God. I need to take care of these creatures. I guess I now have to block the Hypnotic Spectre unless my hand is absolute garbage. Oh, I don't even have that option. He's playing his Raggedy Taggedy Paralyze on me. Taking four, having to discard another card and taking damage this is brutal he's gonna is he gonna pump it as well oh things are just keep getting better and better for me um i think we kind of lost track here with life total i remember this we had a discussion like what was my life i think it was 15 yeah i think 15 is correct and now he's dealing four uh, six yeah he's dealing six damage so i'm on nine so that's so good losing a sarah angel Deciding not to untap the Pegasus. Maybe I have a resurrection here. Wrath of God. Okay, at least that's something. At least that's something. That's kind of going to keep me breathing here. I only have two in hand. Remember, I've been mind twisted this turn. So it's been extremely difficult. There is a Mishra's Factory. I need a resurrection here to take back. Yes, resurrection. Get that Sarah back. Bam, back in the game. Remember, just... Oh, terror. Oh, man. Why did you have to do that, Justin? <sighs> Remember, Justin's still on 20. I haven't even dealt a single point of damage. I've been under pressure since the get-go here. Um, playing a soul ring. Probably going to swing in here. Wow, no, he's playing Lord of the Pits. Wow, I do like that. I think it's very cool, very flavorful. Uh, Justin, really nice guy, really nice player. Um, he's actually a photographer. Oh, look at that, a balance. So I have to discard cards again, but I, I kind of felt like I had to do it. Remember, I am on nine. Maybe I should have taken the damage from the Lord of the Pit, let him sacrifice his factory, get to two. I mean, it's dangerous, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Should I have waited for one more turn? Because I'm still under pressure. I lost a lot of good cards there. Tapping four for a resurrection. Ooh, taking back my angel. I'm not dead yet. And what I wanted to say is Justin is actually a very good uh, photographer, travel photographer. So um, I'll put a uh, link to his Instagram in the description of this game. And you can, you can have a look. He's got some nice pictures on his Instagram account. Um, we're now just in top decking mode. I, I mean, things are still looking really good for Justin. He's got that Will of the Wisp to block. And remember, a Wrath of God cannot take care of the factory. Oh, Lord of the Pit again. And he's got a lot of food. I really think I should have played that balance better in, in, in hindsight. Um, there is another Wrath of God. The problem is that his Mishra's factories are surviving these Wraths. And I guess I'm, I'm checking how many rafts I've played so far. This is the unlimited one, by the way. No, uh, Ray's dead. Oh, man. Can he play this turn? No, he can't. He's attacking. Going on five. Oh, man. Finding a Sarah Angel. I, get, I mean, I do have good top decks. But the problem is so does Justin. And he's just one step ahead this entire game. Look at that. Lord of the Pit hitting the table. Uh, why am I not just playing with Swords to Plowsiers in this deck? Why do I have to be so stubborn? Maybe I need to play with Spirit Links. Because the thing is, I, I like to play with, with cards that... I, I don't, let me put it differently. I don't like to play with the obvious, the usual suspects. Uh, so that's why I'm not playing with Swords here. But again, I am playing with Sarah Angel. So it's a bit... I'm not very consistent with that. Attacking here. Oh, I'm going to roll the dice. Oh! Oh, I need this gin. I need this gin. 
I'm going to die. I'm going to die if, remember, I'm going to roll the dice. If it's odd, I'm going to die. If it's even, I'm going to get a 5-5 five, five flying gin, and I can double block the Lord of the Pit. Let's see what's going to happen here. Oh, no! Oh! Uh. <sighs> Maybe you remember game one. Um, in game one, every dice roll was in my favor. Um, but, Justin, you've earned this, man. I thought, despite the fact that, um, you know, this game, game three in life total was pretty, pretty one-sided, I guess. I do think it was a really fun, fun game because I kept coming back from a position where I thought I was, I was gone. But then you kept fighting back. And uh, yeah, very interesting games, even more interesting than I, I, I thought beforehand, where I thought, okay, it's going to be two mono colors against each other. But there was just a lot of things happening. Very, very interesting. Thank you, Justin, for this matchup and for sharing your beautiful deck. Uh, he actually told me he's going to send me his Lord of the Pits so I can sign them. So I'm looking forward to your mail. That, that's probably going to be a new video on this channel. Why not? Uh, and I'm going to share your Lord of the Pits here again on the channel. Thank you, man. Really appreciate this game. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, um, you can do so by subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. Uh, you can also leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think, man. Did I make some mistakes? What is the name of that statue that I was talking about? Um, anyway, I'm sure you know. And um, you can uh, like, that always helps. You can uh, share this on your, on your socials, uh, you know, Twitters, Instagrams, wherever. Uh, it's, it's really appreciated. And you can also support the show financially uh, like Justin and like uh, many, many others have done so far. And you can do that by becoming a Patreon. And I actually just organized my first Patreon only tournament. And uh, I can tell you, it is a lot of fun and craziness. So if you want to join into that action, check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Talking about the Patreon, let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!